At the end of a very rainy week here in the UK, we return to Research Talks from Stockbox with Alan Green. Welcome back again, Alan. Thank you, Mark. Good to be back. And how are you doing this week? Yes, uh, you're right. It's been rainy. Uh, it's been quite a week um, in, in many ways, but um, I'm actually looking forward to three days off a bank holiday weekend where I, I won't even think about the markets. Uh, well, I say that I probably will, but um, but uh, <laughs> I can actually switch off for three days. But yeah, it's we had a rainstorm here that on mm. the south coast this morning, but uh, it's now cleared and I'm seeing some beautiful blue sky outside. So oh, good. Hopes, high, hopes run high for the weekend. Well, let's hope so. I did look at the forecast and, and your is uh, is sunny apparently at the weekend but I've not quite got the blue sky at the moment we've still got grey overcast and it is a little bit drizzly but uh, but hopefully as you say it does brighten up for the weekend and uh, yeah a nice three days to uh, to just switch off you need that occasionally don't you because uh, the markets really do take up quite a lot of your energy if you're involved in them it, it, it it's it's very much the case. I I, I think uh, you know. There's uh, as as I think a lot of people that will attest to in the markets. There's an awful lot of inaction at times, but uh, you have to stay switched on and mm. tuned in because because when things happen, they happen yeah. very suddenly. Of course, you yeah. can get a burst of activity, and um, uh, you know more can happen in six hours than. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Will have happened in, in the prior six weeks. It's, yeah. uh, it, it's that, that's the way the markets are, and I think that's why we love being in the markets too. But um, exactly, yeah. it, it it takes an it it, it it takes a toll that perhaps uh, sometimes you don't realise. So when mm. an opportunity mm. comes up to take three days off, it's uh, mm. it's great. Mm. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So today we'll be talking Irish gold with Conroy Gold, and also Catenay, which is a tech company, distributed ledger tech. Uh, and they, they quote themselves as saying the block, blockchain tech for the real world. So um, so you've got tech and and uh, an Irish gold. So we're going to start with uh, with the Irish. Yes, indeed we are. Okay, uh, Con- so Conroy, yeah. Conroy Gold, um, Epic Code CGNR. Mm-hmm. Um, shares are traded as high as 38p on the air and as low as, as, low as 4p. Um, currently sitting at around uh, 20, 27, 28p, uh, which gives it a market cap of, of 8.5 million. Mm-hmm. Now we were talking before uh, uh, before about uh, uh, the the um, the uh, the chief executive and uh, and uh, chairman and owner. Uh, well, he's he's not the owner, but uh, he may as well be Professor Richard Conroy, mm-hmm. who is he's he's a a major figure in the industry. But um, that they run the business. Uh, uh, he and uh, and Maureen Jones, the managing director and also company secretary, uh, they've been together for many years, and they run the business. Almost like a family business, but um, it's it's anything but. It's um, this company is really really going places. Um, so so I, I'll just basically cover the uh, board before I go into the uh, into the um, mm-hmm. into the assets the company owns and the progress it's making. So Professor Richard Conroy been in the, in the industry for years. I'm guessing he must be getting a, he must be in his his, his 80s now, but <clears throat> absolutely no sign of slowing down whatsoever. And I think he, uh, if you ever wanted evidence that um, uh, hard work um, leads to longevity, I think he um, he absolutely epitomizes that statement. Mm. So, um, but he, uh, the professor founded Conroy Petroleum, um, uh, Natural Resources PLC, Galmoys Inc. in County Kilkenny. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that's a rather unfortunate uh, name, but uh, I hope Kenny doesn't mind. But uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> founded Conroy Gold in 1995. But um, outside of that, he's an emeritus professor of physiology and has written a, a number of books um, uh, on, on the human condition and is a, is, is a, a fascinating guy through and through. Um, I mentioned Maureen Jones. Maureen's also a non-exec on uh, an exec director at, at Corellian Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Uh, Professor Garth Earls is consulting geologist. Brenda McMorrow and Howard Bird, they're both non-execs uh, with um, some 55 years of experience in the industry between them. Um, uh, Brenda McMorrow uh, was a CFO at uh, Circle Oil, Ivernia, and also uh, the connections there with Anglo-American. Uh, Howard Bird. Uh, of course, Briggers Gold and Southern Era Diamonds, um, and um, uh, some work with Rio. Uh, many is in the industry, so an impressive, an impressive board um, to to uh, advise the company on its progress. So Conroy Gold, as you already say, Mark, it's Irish gold. Um, they have uh, that there are four uh, float. Well, 
four four projects, and one of these is very much the flagship project, which is um, which has uh, seen the company so far this year uh, progress um, or, or make make rapid progress from uh, lows of about five p back in. Um, uh, Back in, back in February this year, um, up to the the uh, 28p that we see today, um, uh, it it 100% owns uh, Conroy 100% owns the Clontibret, Clay Lake, Glenish, and Sleeve Gar Sleeve Gla, uh, 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 Gold projects um, uh, in a a gold trend that uh, the company discovered um, in the Orlock Bridge Fault, which is in the Longford Down Massive in uh, northeastern Ireland, and that straddles County Longford and, and County Down. Uh, so so the the company have been working. Uh, on these uh, on, on, on these uh, these projects uh, for a number of years, um, to date uh, the the Clontibret, uh, uh, um and, uh, and 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 project uh, estimates uh, give a combined jork estimated resource of three hundred twenty thousand ounces of gold indicated, one hundred ninety seven of uh, ounces of one hundred ninety seven thousand ounces of gold inferred totaling 517,000 ounces um, with an average grade of, of two grams per ton. But the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the region is, 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 is believed to contain an awful lot uh, more gold. In fact, uh, the northeastern area uh, in total, it is uh, that the company says has potential for a further 8.8 .8 million ounces um, uh, uh, of gold. So, um, huge potential in the region, and uh, as we progress th with this, you'll see that uh, uh, um, yeah, um, uh, uh, other other companies are also looking looking at this and uh, and um, uh, recognizing the potential that uh, that uh, Conroy has been working on for many years. Mm -hmm. So the, the region um, is has a lot of history. In mining um, across the region, there are 20 lead mines. Uh, there's a copper mine and also antimony mines. Uh, uh, um, and gold was, in fact, first discovered in the antimony mines uh, in, in the in the 50s. Um, and uh, and and since that time, the company have uh, worked and and uh, developed the resource um, and un undertaken undertaken. Uh, 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 um, numerous amounts of soil testing and um, and uh, rock sampling in in the area to to confirm the the uh, the potential across the region. Um, I, I will say as an aside that the, the uh, Conroy also has interest in Finland uh, as well um, in the Lapland gold built. Um, not particularly active at present because the focus is in Clontibret, which I'm going to come back to in a second. But uh, but nonetheless the. Uh, um, uh, Conroy has undertaken sampling uh, across the region, and uh, the the uh, the license areas uh, they're looking at across the Lapland Gold Belt are are prospected for iron oxide, copper, gold (IOCG). Um, mm -hmm. In addition, they are close to the Catilla Underground Gold Mine. Which contains one of the largest known depo gold deposits in Europe, um, uh, currently some 4.4 million ounces. Um, and of course, you know, prior to coming on, uh, Mark, we discussed the uh, where gold was going and uh, the potential for gold. And um, and uh, we, we've seen two thousand dollars an ounce, and uh, and uh, th there's a bit of a pause in gold's progress at the moment. But uh, um, I, I think uh, there's recognition that. Um, uh, these projects now are, that, that are coming to fruition uh, will create will create um, a huge wealth going forward for the uh, for the the project owners and uh, and also of course um, the uh, uh, gold being a tangible source of value um, versus fiat currency um, will 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 provide a, a, a huge source of value going forward. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, 2020 has been a year of great progress, as I've already um, uh, indicated, for Conroy Gold with a low of uh, uh, 5p on the year, now sitting at 28p. Um, the company declared a half-year loss after tax of €278,000, um, but recorded net assets of €17.5 million Euros, uh, mm -hmm. across, the, across the mines. Of course, that's based on uh, MPV regions. Um, now, the uh, I'm going back to, to the Clontibret um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, prospect now. Um, sampling on Clontibret um, uh, was taken on a tiny area, so um, the, the the company drilled down 
between 200 and 350 meters. Um, two grams were sampled, was produced from there. And based on the based on the modeling and the the uh, information they 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 uh, they've uh, recovered from Clontibret, the geology is very similar to the Fosterville mine in Victoria, Australia, and of course Fosterville we discussed uh, mm. in in regard to other clients, uh, mm-hmm. power metal resources and ECR minerals, uh, Fosterville is is one of the most profitable gold mines t- um, in, in in the world t- um, at the moment. So uh, we, with similar geology, um, uh, clearly that, that that's that's highly encouraging. Mm-hmm. Also, the uh, the, the a, a survey was undertaken of Clontibret um, and uh, a, a preliminary. Uh, um, um, Economic survey was was taken from Clontibret, um, and based on gold, a gold price of which was at then uh, thirteen hundred dollars per ounce, um, uh, the uh, Clontibret would work as a as as a gold mine. Uh, it would uh, be, be profitable, and um, at that juncture, was estimated to have a value of some seventy two and a half million. So you can see where we're going with this. That the mm. we've seen an increase in the gold price. Uh, the net present value was based on an earlier gold price, so um, so there, there is huge value here. Um, in terms of uh, funding itself, Conroy is well funded. Um, the company raised uh, three hundred fifty thousand with it in the convertible loan loan note with an existing shareholder um, earlier this year, um, and uh, recently raised and a further three hundred thousand sterling in a placing at twelve p, um, and also warrants were issued at sixteen p at that point too. But the the big landmark event so far this year was announced on the twenty first of July. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the the company announced a joint venture with Anglo Asian Mining to mm. develop. A gold mine at Clontibret, and of course, continue exploration in that region. Now, um, Anglo American, of course, is uh, is is a uh, is, is a large company, has a market mm-hmm. cap of currently of 175 million, and is active in um, in in a, in a number of uh, gold projects and gold mines uh, across Azerbaijan. As a company, it's cash flow positive and it's debt free, um, so it's a it's a very good partner for Conroy to uh, to to. To get into get into bed with, uh, so the uh, the the structure of the deal is as follows: um, Anglo are committing two million euros to acquire an initial seventeen and a half percent, and there is an option for Anglo to increase its holding to twenty five percent by upping its spend to four million euros to complete the primary exploration and uh, and. Uh, and um, um, sh- uh, scheduling program for the for for, uh, for, for the gold mine at uh, Clontibret. The mm-hmm. company also has a further option to acquire fifty five percent by then funding Clontibret to uh, all the way through to mine construction and uh, and clearly um, uh, clearly that it, it it will it's then likely that other deals will be done in relation to uh, the the two clay lake. Clay Lake uh, licenses and the other nine Longford Down licenses uh, going forward. So w- we have here um, a company that uh, owns four assets outright, uh, has a number of other licenses. Quantibret already has a net present value uh, based on a much low gold price of $72 million. Um, and uh, uh, we, we have a joint venture with a well-established, profitable, uh, debt-free mining company. And uh, Conroy is still trading on a, a market cap of just eight and a half million. So I see huge potential here. Um, I, and, and I believe once we get uh, news of progress from Clontibret uh, with the Anglo-Asian uh, and um, and uh, and Conroy joint venture. I think we're going to see this uh, this stock really really start to motor. Um, mm. Eight and a half million. Uh, and, and if you compare if you compare that market cap capitalization to the likes of Power Metal Resources with its range of um, assets, mm. and also ECR, ECR Minerals in uh, Australia with uh, with uh, the uh, Kresic and Bayliston uh, gold licenses, I think um, Conroy at the moment uh, looks to me to be materially undervalued. But uh, clearly. Mm-hmm. Uh, do your own research on that to make your own decision. But certainly on looking at the investment proposition for Conroy, I, I think there's an awful lot of upside on offer. Yes. And I think uh, when you think of Irish gold, you, you, I don't think you associate 
Ireland with you know it's a gold mining area or certainly I don't um but clearly you know the the deal that, that that's significant the deal with Anglo Asian to actually turn it into a producing mine I mean <laughs> what more um sort of evidence do you need that there's there's, there's a lot of confidence there that the, that obviously there is there is a deposit there to uh, to exploit um so yeah I think it's a very significant piece of news that came out only what well, a few weeks ago wasn't it it, it, that's a very interesting point, actually, Mark. I, I did some some work a few years back with with another Irish mining company. Mm. I, I'm not going to mention the, mention them here, but um, but uh, nonetheless, there there was a uh, th- th- this company uh, uh, has has an asset down in Wicklow um, in in the Avoca region, and in fact, my wife comes from from that area, so uh, we, we know it reasonably well. But mm. um, but uh, um, modern gold sampling techniques and also um, modern aero mag survey techniques uh, there was a, a, a the the geological teller survey that was undertaken which uh, indicated that uh, far higher grades of gold were literally sitting in some of the streams across the Wicklow mountains really? um, than had previously been thought so I think the there's also um, there are also some um, uh, a number of books on the subject too, and I think uh, geologically, the the way Ireland was formed geologically um, millions of years ago um, makes it high, makes the whole area highly prospective for for mining, uh, not just for, for for base metals, but but for precious metals too. So um, uh, it, it, that that's why I think we're see, we're seeing this interest. But I think Conroy <laughs> really have struck gold, literally, <laughs> <laughs> metaphorically and literally, um, mm. uh, because they they've uh, again, um, so many small cap mining companies have quality projects, but it's been a slow burn process up until the rise in the gold price this year. And all mm. of a sudden, these these projects become economically viable. Uh, we know Clontebret was economically viable at thirteen hundred dollars a troy ounce, and here we are at two thousand dollars a troy ounce. So, so there is a compelling argument, I, I think, for this. But there are also some other mining companies in Ireland too that do offer do offer uh, 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 great 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 prospects. So um, I will endeavour to cover those in in the coming weeks. Yes, it would be very nice. Yeah, Irish gold. It's a good good theme. It's a good uh, good place to operate. Um, and I think from what I know about Conroy, it's uh, it's, it's perhaps the start of a, a really nice developing story there. Um, and as you say, you, you know, undervalued. So um, I think definitely one to keep an eye on and see how um, how it develops. Very much so. And, uh, and of course, the best thing about uh, um, uh, mining in Ireland or gold mining in Ireland mm. is, is you can spend all day in the gold mine, digging up the gold, and then go and have a great pint of Guinness in the evening. Yeah, of course you can. It always tastes nicer in Ireland. That's, that's definitely... It always tastes better in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> must, must be something to do with the water from the streams that contain all this gold. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah. Great. Okay. So that's Conroy. So now we're moving on to uh, Cat and I, a tech company. What uh, what can you tell us about Cat and I? Okay, so Cat and I was uh, formerly the Milestone Group. Um, this mm. is going back a couple of years. Uh, Cat and I Innovation, the uh, epic code is CTEA. And of course, if you look at the share price, you'll see the company has had a, a pretty pretty active year to date. Mm-hmm. Shares were literally trading at um, at sort of uh, uh, naught point. Uh, 0.095p uh, and uh, have seen a year high of 9.75p. So that gives you some idea of the, mm. the range of trading that's taken place, but with good reason. Um, shares are currently trading at uh, 3.7p. Um, if, in fact, um, it's so relatively volatile. There's, there's so, such, a, such a lot of movement. As we speak, the share price could, could be could be moving either up or down. But uh, mm. um, uh, So yeah, uh, Cat and I Innovation. Um, uh, Cat and I uses distributed ledger technology um, uh, to uh, and has brought uh, the technology into both the commercial and the the, the ledger sectors. Um, uh, historically, uh, I think most people have looked at uh, blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology as uh, as the technology that supports Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And of course, it does it does that. But um, there are a multitude of other applications. And as you rightly said uh, at the beginning, Mark, uh, Cadma Innovation brings blockchain technology into the real world, mm-hmm. and they've they they've done this uh, through um, through 
a number of products. They 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 have uh, products called on site and on side. Um, on site mm. is a it's a, a flexible uh, mobile management and inspection and reporting tool, um, mm. and it combines management of data, um, uh, paperless and paperless reporting systems, um, and also for remote workers. Um, and uh, every time uh, a record is created, that goes into into the blockchain and creates an immutable uh, record. So um, all of their offerings are based on that. Um, before I go into the developments this year and, and the details, um, the details uh, and the reasons why the share price has been so active, I, I'm just going to go into the into into the board and um, to, to tell you about the company and the people behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, Guy Meyer is the uh, CEO. He's been he was acting CEO after the departure of Tony Sanders last year, and he's he's recently taken on the the role permanently. And Guy is Guy's well known in the industry. He's uh, he's he's well liked, and he's very he's very um, enthusiastic uh, in interviews. You'll see him talking about the technology and uh, and extolling the virtues of of the offering. He's a he's a very good front man. Um, the uh, uh, the, the chief technology officer is um, Alan Simpson, and Alan Simpson has many years uh, as a technology entrepreneur and uh, is very well regarded. He's best known, perhaps, for as being the guy that um, built and produced the iPlayer for the BBC. Um, okay. And he's uh, so he's uh, if, if you Google Alan Simpson, that that's basically what what he's best known for. But he's he's got involved in in uh, uh, blockchain te- technology a while back uh, um, and uh, formed, uh, formed a system called Chainsy, uh, which is also, um, he, he's, on, he's the chief technology officer of Chainsy, which is uh, a company that's, uh, or an organization that's owned by ZDN Group. And I'll come on to say ZDN Group in, in, in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, so we also have um, Brian Thompson, uh, who came in early this year. Um, Brian Thompson owns nearly 30% of the company. Um, he's a technology entrepreneur, entrepreneur um, uh, based in the Northeast, um, and has uh, developed um, businesses called BTIC and Insurance and Third Eye Novatech, um, and is a is is a, a, a longstanding technology investor. So you can, you can Google him and find out about him. John Farthing. Uh, has come in as uh, the chief finance officer. John Farthing is is well known throughout the city. I, I've known John for many years. He's a he, he's a he's a thoroughly nice fellow. And uh, but he's um, he he's been involved uh, in asset management at a number of different levels and uh, is is finance uh, director on on a number of companies. So. Um, that's a, a bit of background on the board. So, so um, the on-site, uh, the, the on-site offering, um, they have developed, uh, they have con- a contract uh, with an insurance company, Fired or Guardian, um, and uh, and again, any any sort of events, any developments with uh, with the um, with, with the fire doors, the companies and uh, the the buildings, the company is responsible for get logged on to this. The remote on-site system, and um, the company obviously earns a fee from providing that service every year. Um, they have uh, uh, on-site, which is a centralized management tool developed for sporting organ- organizations that deal with coaching, um, coaching staff, uh, uh, timesheet processing, um, r- uh, um, attendance of uh, of uh, delegates, pupils, and so on. And um, through the on the on-site. Um, uh, offering they that they are they're working with um, uh, football clubs such as Charlton Athletic, uh, um, Charlton Athletic, Southend United, Rotherham United, and also Harlequins uh, uh, Rugby Club. So so that's 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 um, the, the the onside offering has been run, running there for a number of years. They've also had they also have onsite ID, which is a, a it was. Uh, was developed to uh, allow a user or a wallet holder, um, uh, and it was developed for um, Android and uh, and iOS um, uh, to prove to a third party their identity and also the status um, of any qualification um, or, uh, as we'll see, um, their, their their medical status in regard to whether they've been tested for COVID or not. Using Using uh, on on site, they developed a Cove ID, uh, which mm-hmm. 
which was um, launched early this year and created the initial uh, explosion in the share price. Um, mm-hmm. The app was developed um, and was uh, was highlighted and uh, received a, a, a lot of publicity in regard to in regard to its potential as as providing a solution a, a back to work solution for for employees. So so uh, once employees have this on their phone or their device, um, they can then prove every time they go into work or every time they they meet a client or um, ha- have a business meeting, they can prove their their status. And mm-hmm. you know th- this is. This is going to be an essential part of life as we go forward today. Mm. Uh, the the um, uh, COVID ID app was trialled with by Newcastle Premier Health, and uh, the trial was successful. Uh, successful to the point where the company announced recently that uh, that was that they would they had uh, developed it into the first commercial contract in the UK. And indeed, they have recently appointed. Well, it was announced a couple of days ago. They, they've appointed um, a, a marketing company called MarkApps to help market and develop the the uh, the sales of the device to commercial organisations across the UK. Um, so again, uh, uh, another trial was undertaken in um, in Botswana. Um, a Botswana company. For, uh, um, uh, owned by the former Botswana ambassador, the UK, Canada, and the Caribbean, um, th- has launched and is trialing the uh, the app Africa ID uh, ac- across across Botswana and through Southern Africa, and um, it has the potential to reach some 346 million people in the Southern Africa uh, Southern Afri- African area. So mm. we will be hearing more. From uh, from the the success um, and uh, the progress of Africa ID, I I, I imagine in the very, very near future. Mm. In terms of funding, um, the company is well funded. It raised uh, it raised uh, uh, some three hundred thousand early this year, and seven hundred thousand was raised recently at two P. So the company is well funded to to develop this. But um, going back to the Cove ID, the the key thing with Cove ID is it's a a consortium joint venture with Zedian Group, and you'll remember I mentioned Zedian Group a little earlier in re- relation to the CTO uh, Alan. Uh, Alan Simpson. Uh, ZGN Group is is led by Professor Michael Manelli, who is um, who is, is something of a powerhouse in in the um, in uh, the financial services industry. Uh, amongst other things, he's the uh, he's the sheriff of of, the, of London, um, a, a, a current sheriff, sheriff of the city of London. He's an emeritus professor of commerce at Gresham College. He founded the first digital map of the world um, and has uh, has has developed a, a number of applications in seismology and cartography. Um, uh, educated at Harvard and Trinity, um, he's also uh, he's also an executive on a number of, of AIM companies, and more recently he's undertaken work for Dira, which of course is now uh, mainly kinetic uh, and the defense science and technology uh, laboratories. Um, ZGN Group is. Is London's leading commercial think tank, founded in '94, um, to advance society through better financing, use of better technology, and so on. So the Cove ID is a joint venture consortium with ZGN Group and Catnai Innovation, um, and these are, if you put Alan Simpson and Professor Michael Manelli together mm. in a room, got some serious brain power um, uh, at your disposal. These guys are. Very much at the top of their game, so um, I, I'm excited for Cat and I because there is genuine potential uh, using blockchain, which of course is um, it's 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 uh, it, it creates immutable records, uh, records that can't be changed or broken through the through blockchain technology. And uh, what it will mean is that, that where we have the the current shenanigans of uh, can we travel to Spain? Will we? Mm. Can we come back from France? Oh no, there's a there's a 14 day quarantine period. Um, a, an app like this for travel would make all the difference because because your status, you could jump in your car and drive to the port and show your status, and you'd get on the you get on the Eurotunnel or you get on the ferry or whatever, or you go to the airport and get on the plane, and uh, that you, your status would be probably read by barcode off the app or something similar so it, it could be seen that you were uh, you're tested and you're and you and you're co- uh, and you're covid free so so i think the commercial potential is absolutely enormous and uh, 
that's probably why we've seen so much volatility in the cat and i share price because mm. b- because the technology right now is in its infancy um mm. it's uh, it's it's just they're just starting to roll it out into the commercial sector but the uh, the scope the scope for sales and development is absolutely enormous so currently trading on a market cap of eight million um mm. if this company were traded on the nasdaq it would probably have a valuation some 10 times of mm. that uh so some ten, some ten times where, mm. where where it sits right now, but clearly um, it has to progress. It has to it has to get the the technology out into the marketplace and adopted by by leading commercial players. And as soon as that happens, I think this is I think this this is going to be one of the big share price performers of two thousand twenty. Wow. Okay. And how close are they? Do you think to 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 getting onto the market with with some of their products? <laughs> Well, well, they, they've already got that. They already have the the uh, obviously I mentioned the Africa ID, but uh, mm. their, their first commercial contract is with Newcastle Premier Health. They've they've appointed Markaps to help them develop and roll out the the technology. So um, I think we are probably weeks away from hearing uh, about the first the first commercial deal. I, I don't know. Clearly, mm. that's that's not for me to say. Yeah. But um, but given. The development and the pace of events to date, I think that's. I, I think we we will be hearing something very soon. But uh, it, 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 if nothing else, just take a look at Alan Simpson and mm. Professor Mandelli, and that will give you some idea of the of the the the, the enormous potential that, uh, that 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 sits within this group. I think the strap line that. Uh, blockchain technology for the real world really sums up the company and um you know you can it's always associated with crypto or you know bitcoin that kind of thing but it can be used in many 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 more applications than that it's a very you know powerful piece of technology and their products look very innovative indeed indeed yes yeah it, it, it's a very exciting company and i think uh, i i i think the in in this day and age, of course, we're constantly hearing about systems being hacked and uh, and uh, you know bank accounts being compromised mm. and all the rest of it. Yeah. And clearly, as technology but develops, that's it. There's always going to be a risk there. But blockchain technology, um, particularly the the way Cat and I uh, employ blockchain technology, it's it, it's immutable. It can't be changed. And that's mm. that's uh, I think is is essential as we go forward into mm. a post COVID world or a, a world where we're living with COVID. Mm. People need to travel around. Mm. We, you know, uh, we we we'll all have to go back to work at some point, and uh, um, we'll, we'll need something reliable that can report our status to the mm. people we meet with and the people we do business with mm. so they can be sure that we are we're we're safe to be with yeah covid secure as they say these days yeah, covid secure covid yeah. secure yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay great well thank you alan so that's uh, conroy gold and cat and I innovation that we've discussed today thank you very much and um we'll chat again in a week's time look forward to it Mark. thanks alan thank you very much bye-bye thanks bye Thank you for listening to this Stockbox interview. For more information, interviews and videos, visit our website at stockboxmedia.com or give us a follow on Twitter by searching at Stockbox Media. Stockbox Media.